Hi, it's Pat Thorne from Sojourner Counseling. Feeling a little anxious and depressed lately? Well, that's a good thing. Let me tell you why. Anxiety is caused by fear. And fear triggers our inner programming, our, flight, our survival instincts, our fight or flight response. And right now, COVID is a real threat to our physical survival. So anxiety is a natural response. It's our fight response. That heart racing, you can't sleep, you can't sit still, hypervigilance. It's our body telling us to do something. There's a threat. You need to fight for your survival. And depression, that's our flight response. That's a stay safe, stay home, hide, total, conserve energy, sleep, stock up on food and supplies while we wait out and wait for the danger to pass. So if you're feeling especially anxious or depressed lately, that's a good thing. That means your inner guidance system is working because there is a real threat out there. So what can you do about it? Well, first, be grateful. Gratitude. The, knowing that your anxiety system, your fight or flight response is working, it's what's gonna keep you safe. Your anxiety has you staying at home, it has you washing your hands a thousand times. It has you maintaining that physical distance to, to protect yourself. Now, some seem to be ignoring the, the threat. You know, they seem to not care or not notice. And that's actually a normal response too, and for two reasons. For some, it's just not an imminent threat. It's something that's so far out there, it's in another state, it's not, it's not close, that they're just not actually feeling it. They're just not feeling the imminent threat. But for a lot of people, it's just denial. And denial, it's, it's an incredibly strong coping strategy. We use it all the time. But unfortunately, the people that aren't having their, aren't stressed or anxious about this, are putting others at risk. So when you're feeling great, when you're feeling anxious or stressed, be grateful. Be grateful because that's what's gonna keep you safe. And be grateful that other people are anxious and stressed too because that will keep you safe too. Also, we're talking about social distancing. Uh, I wanna change that to physical distance. Keep your physical distance, but let's work on closer social connections. Reach out, but from six feet away. This is so important that we maintain our social connections. That's social support. Uh, this is such an unusual time. You know, all of us have gone through stressful and scary times. and. Most of, it goes, most of us go through it alone. We go through a divorce or death in the family or job loss, or we're struggling with disease or disability or caring for someone that has us isolated and alone, you know, and, um, or it's either just ourselves or just our small family. Now, sometimes it's a community that goes through a big stressor, like a natural disaster, a hurricane, or a flood, or a fire that affects a whole community. And sometimes it's a whole country, you know, during a time of war. But this is a global threat. Every human being on the planet is at risk. So it's a shared human experience. So it's so important that we reach out and stay connected because we're all going through this at the same time. We're going through this together. Sharing the experience makes it a little less scary and a little less lonely. So while keeping your physical distance, I want you to beef up that social connections. Do something. I always tell my clients who struggle with anxiety, anxiety just wants a plan. It just wants you to do something. Anxiety is telling us to fight for our survival. But COVID requires us to stay home, to not work, to, not, to do nothing, to flee. It's causing us to go into a flight response but our anxiety is our fight response. Now we're gonna fluctuate between a fight response and a flight response of just, I wanna stay home, I wanna be safe, I wanna just hunker down, or I feel like anxious, I've gotta go do something. Now, some people, especially those doctors and nurses or grocery store workers or postal workers or all those people who can't flee, they have to work they have to do something. They're the ones fighting. They never get the break and they've got to find the way to get a break where they can go rest and recharge and flee and get away from it for a little while. But other of us need to find outlets for anxiety. 
uh, find a way <clears throat> to help in the fight. No, some some are from, some of us are doing some practical things. We're making masks or delivering food to neighbors or donating blood or just out there doing something. But other of us have got to find more physical activities, gardening, walking, cleaning the house, just finding ways to get exercise. Find ways to alleviate the stress that you're feeling. And physical activity and physical movement is, it helps the best. Laughter. It's important to shift the brain chemistry from an anxious feeling to uh, a more joyful feeling. Put all the precautions in place. Make sure you're safe. Stay informed. And then distract yourself. Get away from it. Remember the show MASH? So that was a bunch of doctors in a highly stressful situation. And when they were in that operating room, they were focused and they were on it. They did what they needed to do. And then in that off times, they were goofy and they were laughing and they were playing practical jokes and drinking, which I'm not telling you, don't, don't be drinking, but they were taking a break from it. They were finding ways to shift that, and that brain chemistry. So shift from, from uh, the stressful, anxious chemicals in your body to the happy, to, to happier, joyful chem chemistry. You know, watch a funny movie, laugh, play games with your kids, be silly. And finally, breathe. Anxiety has us all tight and constricted, and we're, we're just most of us are holding our breath, waiting for what's going to happen next. So breathe. Take a deep breath. Deep breaths. We'll get through this together. Just breathe.